Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to English Football Club Barcelona, your Barcelona's channel in English. Well, today we have some news to talk about. We are going to talk about them very fast because it's more or less the same as always. And uh, I want it as the players. And today is 31st of, uh, well, May 31st. And the players are on holidays. I want to make um, to talk about the season. But before starting, let me remind you, if you like Barcelona and you don't want to miss any of our daily news, no, <laughs> any of our daily videos, then this is your channel. Down there, you have a red button that you can hit to subscribe and like this, you will not miss any of the daily news of the team of your dreams. And also, like this, you will be helping us to keep growing. And without more delay, let's start. <laughs> Well, as I told you in the intro, that that intro was a bit messed up because I said things that makes that are obvious. Well, uh, let's talk about this very fast. Rafinha again. Uh, Barcelona is still there. No, we don't know what's going to happen. Actually, today Xavi and Laporta are going to meet to talk about this, about the economical situation, and Rafinha's father talked about uh, the situation of his son. He said that. Uh, there is an option for Rafinha to go to Barcelona. To be honest, now I read yesterday that Leeds won 55 million euros. The options are nil. Literally, I mean, Barcelona is not going to pay 55 million euros for Rafinha. It's impossible. We don't have the money. We don't have even the money to pay the players who we, we signed already for zero. Imagine Christensen and Kessier. We need to. To, to remove players, to put them in. So how can we get another player for such a price? No? But well, we will see. No, we will see. It seems that Barcelona is expecting to start the conversations with Leeds. Other one who may come is Lewandowski. Lewandowski has pressured Bayern a lot. He has said directly that uh, his stay in Bayern is over and he will move soon. Uh, well, his stay, in, his stay in Bayern is over. He said that, directly that. Uh, and more pressure for the German team. Uh, that person, I think that for 30 million, getting Lewandowski and then paying that money to for getting money, what else do you want? No? I mean, you, you get a, a, a wonderful player. Let another player leave. But, well, Lewandowski, as I'm reading, he's not going to be 100% thinking of Bayern. And also, Bayern will get a lot of money for a player that next year will will live for free so more interesting things um well this is a beard and i found it interesting barcelona has been the team that the young the teenagers watch the most the teenagers and young adults the people between 13 and 24 years old has been uh, well is the, the top team that people between 13 and 24 years old watched just information you know, how much interest generated barcelona uh, more even than real madrid it's ex it's interesting you know, that's the information that la liga la, la liga gave about that so well incre interesting and the one of the latest things is that dest may live it seems that Chelsea is interested in the American player, Barcelona is interested in Azpilicueta and Marcos Alonso. So as the team was being um, was being bought by the new owner, Chelsea and Barcelona couldn't make any conversation about the situation of those players. But the Barcelona expects this next this oh, this week or next week to start those conversations. We will see. Now maybe we get. Azpilicueta, Marcos Anos and some money in exchange of deaths, or maybe no money, but both players. Who knows, no? And last thing I'm reading is that, well, this, and this is going to be the, I like it. I think it's quite interesting. Barcelona wants to go to play, well, it's not wants to go. There is a problem here, to be honest. Barcelona, technically, or the technique area, they want to play just three matches. Actually, in this moment, they have two or three. Talk, no? We're going to play against Inter of Miami 
in the RKPK PNK Stadium. No, no idea. It's in a, in the south of Florida, for what I can read there. I don't know anything else. In sorry, on July 19th, and then we are going to play against New York Red Bulls at Red Bull Arena on 30th July. This stadium is in Nueva York, in New Jersey. Sorry. I read in Spanish and I confused the information. There are 11 days between, and there is an option that Real Madrid and Barcelona will face each other in Las Vegas. A classic for the pre match. All of this will generate a lot of money. You can imagine that Barcelona, it's urgent to get money. But the economical area is thinking that they need a new, well, a fourth friendly match to put more money in the club but the technical area they are saying that it's better to make a good team to put the players in a good form in the preseason and then personally i think it's a good time a, a, a good idea i mean playing matches is a, always a very interesting way to to prepare the preseason and one week i mean one match per week why not? I mean, it sounds perfect for me. You're you're training five days a week. You play a match. You have one day rest. Then no, I mean, it's a preseason. During the preseason, the teams normally pressure more the players because you need to start to put your body uh, in the best weight, in the best form for the season. Eh? And this is what I'm going to talk about. This was the what the video was going to. Uh, until I read some news. No? Well, I'm going to analyze this season. No? <laughs> um, let's go for it. As I promised you the other day. My opinion, this is everything my opinion. I'm not going to read anything. I'm going to attack just for what I remember. So let's just start. We started with Kuman, with Ronald Kuman as a coach. There were some kind of conversations now that probably no, probably yes. I think Laporta didn't find anyone who really he wanted. And I think he wanted Ten Hag or uh, Martinez from Belgium national team. Um, I think Laporta was not really convinced of a Chavi. No, I don't think I'm sure. I'm sure about that. Um, and then as Lapor, as Kuman knew the players already, as Kuman won the King's Cup, etc., they thought, why not? No, let's let Kuman get the the team again and let's see. And if not, we can always change the weather. And I think that was the point. Um Kuman started the, the team started pretty well. No? The preparation, I think it was quite deficitary. We've seen that whole season, but um as some players talked about Kuman, about their relationship with him, etc., I think Kuman was not exactly uh, a very talkative coach, very direct. I think he kept everything for himself. Uh, probably he's an introvert person and he doesn't want to to say things to face. No? Um, and that's what happened to the team. No? There were some things were inside the team, etc. Um, morally, they were not really that well to... And that first match oh, against Real Sociedad, where we won 1-0, was more like a fake true. Um, I mean, like, we won against one of the top teams in our league. But after that, we started so seeing how real Barcelona was. No? Play, playing against Atletico with a no way to play losing many points on the way um, and not just with Kuman I think I don't think it's just it was just Kuman for Kuman's fault when uh, the the other coach I don't remember his name now I'm just saying everything is going by memory uh, the second the, the the coach of the second team who took the the team and also he couldn't win I think he if he won, won one match or he lost one match and drew the other one against Celta, that one, that one I remember, because it was incredible. I mean, from winning 3-0 to Drew in the last minute, 3-3, it's incredible. No? 
many things, you know, many conversations there between Laporta and Kuman of what to do, etc. I think all, one of the things that it was not good for from Laporta's side is that they wanted to put uh, Ricky Puch by force. Now, and Ricky Puch has passed five coaches and none of them has trusted in him. So they've seen something very, very important to not let this player have a minute. And especially, I'm talking about Xavi. No? The Xavi was the, the when Xavi came, and I personally, th I am one of those who think Xavi should have come before. When Xavi came, uh, everyone was expecting for Ricky Puch to have more minutes. It's true that we didn't have Messi, and we, that that lack or that that was a big impo impact to our club. But I don't think that was. I think that's more an excuse. No, I mean uh, it's true that Messi scored many goals last year. He was the top scorer. He's thirty-five years old. No? But I also think that not having Messi, even uh, I'm going to define my position with this. We didn't have Messi and we finished second. It's true that one of the lowest rates of goals in history, in, well, in years, uh, we've, uh, we've let many teams score us goals. I'm not sure what I'm talking about or what I'm saying, but it's true that the numbers we got this year are really bad and probably we are second more by the mistake of our rivals than for our own personal uh, or our own benefit um, I mean we probably we didn't deserve it but the other teams didn't deserve to be second so it, it was the, the team that less this that most deserve between all those the, whatever i'm not sure what i want to say i'm getting lost even in spanish i'm trying to say in the spanish i think in it in spanish too and it's very difficult well anyway we got that second position because the other teams they didn't get it just because of that we didn't deserve it personally i think that no probably with these points with 78 points i think we finished this year third four but second, thanks that Sevilla and Atletico Madrid didn't took La Liga this year as it should have, uh, they should have done. Xavi arrival was impacting. I think it was a good impact to the club. We started, uh, there were just one month, you know? and Xavi started doing all those things, putting those automatisms, etc. And we reached to this match the 0 4 against the king well against the 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 champions of the champion league against real madrid in bar in the bernabeu uh, a, a very important match you no know, morally barcelona was incredible i remember media thinking maybe we can we really can uh, win this this tournament but there was a problem in the middle there was a two weeks break again those breaks for national teams, etc., are very dangerous because they break any dynamic you got. Barcelona goes on a dynamic that they score four goals per match normally, and not every match, but normally in La Liga. From that last match where we won 0 4, later we couldn't score goals. We are reached. This was the starting of our. Uh, drone, no, uh, how, how to call that? This is the moment we start to sink. Zero four, we won, we were uh, zero zero in, a, in Frankfurt, and they came to Barcelona three zero. And in the minute 60, we started to play properly, but we lost two three. This is what I'm talking about. The, it seemed, and probably you think, well, the dynamic of the Europa League, etc. Uh, maybe we we didn't, but no, it's it's not that because after that, in La Liga we started losing points, drawing matches, drawing matches, sorry, uh, losing matches, etc. If I'm not wrong, we won just one match out of the last four. 
very poor numbers for a team like Barcelona. And we reach to the final of the tournament, to this last match that we all almost lose. Imagine. Thankfully, no, thankfully we score with Adama and and um, and Sufati, but what does he say? No, to forget. Personally, to forget. And we started with that t-shirt, with those t-shirts, then with everything. Very bad season. T-shirt, messy living, economical problems. Let's see. Let's see if this summer we can make upside down all of the all of that. We can turn the situation upside down. That's what I mean. And then let's see next season. Anyway, guys, this was my opinion. This was what happened and how well this was what happened and somehow i expect i explained how i felt what i saw and i want i'd like to know your opinion too about this season and also in the next video because i'm going to record it today uh for the for today's tuesday for thursday i think or for wednesday um i'm going to talk about the players that should not stay in Barcelona next season. For my personal opinion, I'm not reading anything from anywhere. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, you know, hit the like button, support, leave down there the comments of what you think about the season or the other news we talked about before about leads with Rafinha, etc. And see you in the next one. Have a nice day.